You're watching another Startup Blog Insights with Taffy Williams, brought to you by NerdStalker. Uh, welcome to another NerdStalker interview. Uh, good morning. This is Greg Gloria, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the NerdStalker Media Network. Today we'll be continuing our monthly segment called Startup Blog Insights with examiner, writer, and entrepreneur Taffy Williams, who is a co-founder and CEO of Colonial TDC. Uh, Colonial TDC offers a professional team of scientific and business experts to build and grow medical and technology companies, and he's also a, a writes for a small business section of examiner.com with his own personal advice on based on his personal insights. Uh, he's a really great guy, and and uh, his blog is called Startup Blog. Uh, he has some great stories of experience that he shares on the blog. So, good morning, Taffy, uh, and welcome to Startup Blog Insights for October 2013. How are you doing? Uh, last time I saw you, we were eating breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it was San Francisco. Um, yeah. I remember that, and I think it was just as cold in July as it was uh, now here in October. <laughs> but Pretty anyway. much all that was colder here than it was in July. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll have to have breakfast in uh, North Carolina sometime. Yeah, the leaves are starting to change colors out here. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, well, and if you don't know what uh, what. Taffy does on a side. He takes really beautiful pictures, and uh, um, if you catch his blog, there's a sidebar that has pictures, and um, I'm sure you're going to post some fall colors up for us, right? Yeah, I've got some. I've got some in my uh, photographic website uh, of of things up in the mountains and things, but uh, yeah, I've got some. Oh, good, good. So anyway, we'll we'll get started. Um, we're, we're continuing this uh, segment again after a couple months delay, but. Um, so every month, you know, let's talk about that. Well, every month at, at NerdStalker, we, we choose an article that Taffy wrote and to gain some uh, Taffy's most in-depth insights into, the, into his blog writing. His blogs are very simple and easy to read, uh, but has a lot of information, and, and we feel that, um, you know, having an interview with Taffy on one of his articles kind of gives you a little bit more uh, in-depth uh, knowledge about uh, what he's writing about. So... Um, this month, uh, we're focusing on an article that was released on October 4th called uh, Six Considerations to Remember About Failure in light of a local favorite conference uh, held by Cass Phillips, uh, one of the uh, nerd soccer friends, uh, called FailCon, which focuses on uh, entrepreneurial failure and how to learn from it. So let's get started. Let's start with the first one called just Failure Happens. <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, the it doesn't matter what it is you do in life. Uh, you could try to uh, fix something in the bathroom. <laughs> you could try to build something. Uh, you could try to level out a door in your hallway. Uh, sooner or later, something is going to occur that didn't work out the way you anticipated, and it's just not, you know, it's going to be a failure. Now, in business, uh, you know, you can have lots of different kinds of failures. Uh, you can have a, a failure of your technology. You can have a, a commercial failure. Uh, you can have some type of a regulatory failure. Uh, you know, you can have a failure of your management. Uh, the co company could fail. A deal could fall through. Failure happens. And so uh, the first thing that it is important to understand is you're not the only one. <laughs> when something bad happens, you're not the only one. It happens. Figure out how to get beyond it and move on. That's very tough with people, isn't it? Um, uh, they like to. I, I I don't know what it is. Maybe you could give me some insight on that. Is that it seems like we focus on failure a lot. Is, is that just the way we're conditioned here, or what, what's going on? Yeah, fear. Uh, fear of failure is a, a significant concern. Um, nobody likes to fail. Uh, you go and take an exam. You're trained at this as a young, as a young kid. You know, you're going to take a test. Yeah. And taking the test, uh, you uh, want to pass. You want to pass with flying colors. Sometimes you don't. Mm. Um, you know, there, so there's a fear of failure because if you fail, what happens next? And it's the fear of the unknown and the risks and the uncertainties can taint your judgment and cause you to, mm. to delay or not make the proper decisions. And so the fact that failure occurs, your fear of the failure can actually increase your chances to fail. 
which is the second one called fear. Fear increases risk. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, it does. Uh, if if you if you have three opportunities and you're afraid to pick among the three and you sit in limbo and they all evaporate on you, you lose. Mm. If you pick the wrong one, you lose. The inability to make a decision uh, it cuts your uh, your timeliness and ability to move rapidly and be able to capitalize on what small companies have and that is speed and uh, being able to make changes and so if something doesn't work the way you anticipated it if you look at it perhaps you can adjust it to make it work make it work better but by doing nothing sometimes that could be equally as bad as failing <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I've experienced that in many projects that I worked on. So, wow, wow, that's good. Uh, and then, you know, I guess it's kind of like the progression of, of of moving forward. It's called learn from it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so I always liked. Uh, it was a Japanese saying I caught in a movie. You know, fix the problem, not the blame. That way, everybody walks away happy. Yeah. If you yeah, can identify yeah. the issues, uh, those things that caused it to not work out the way you wanted it to work out, and you can either fix them in the current situation, or maybe a future one because the current one's gone, because <laughs> that happens. Uh, you, by learning and being able to spot places where problems occur in the future, you can eliminate some of the causes and problems so that you have a better chance of success. Mm -hmm. So always look to figure out what happened, why it happened, not to place the blame, but to keep from having it happen in the future or having something related happen in the future. Mm. Yeah, so that's a, yeah, that's a big, um, yeah. <laughs> we seem to repeat a lot of things, I think. <laughs> I know I well, do. Well, you know, what was it? Uh, uh, I forgot, was it Einstein that said that uh, insanity is doing the same things over and over again yeah, without absolutely. expecting the same uh, result? Yes. Well, it happens a lot. You know, you, <laughs> people continue to do the same thing. They keep having a problem, and they keep thinking that if they keep doing it, it's going to fix it. But it doesn't fix it. The same problem. <laughs> it's nothing. Do something different. <laughs> so you know, after you kind of learn a little bit, there's a there's a confidence builder you kind of mentioned in the article called "You Will Survive," right? Yeah. The, the more times you fail and survive, the more you realize that failure isn't the end of the world. You build a strength and inner self, an ability to get through problems, uh, being able to fix them. Uh, you learn. You actually know more than you did when you started. Uh, you, you know, If you recognize that no matter what happens, I don't care how bad the failure is, unless you got a gun to your head and it accidentally went off, you know, you're going to recover. <laughs> There are there are other alternatives. It may not be the alternatives you've thought of, but there are other alternatives, and you will survive. <laughs> I see. I see. I see. And, and and with that confidence, I think um, you you also have to understand that you you should you should take multiple directions or shots at at that same goal, right? I, that was interesting when you said that, right? Well, yeah, and, and multiple shots on goal are critical. Anytime you're approaching uh, a task, uh, if you approach it with a singular approach, you got one chance, uh, you know, of making your goal. If you have two chance, two two routes, the equal each will get you there, and you can find a way to run both in parallel. You've now increased your chances of getting to that end goal. If you have five of them, as long as you don't out uh, try to uh, outdo your time commitment so that you can't run five in parallel, uh, if costs and other things considered, if you can run five to achieve the same goal, any one of those might get you where you want to go. And as you begin to get past barriers and recognize it, you can start to narrow in on the final single approach. Right, right. So as an example, let's suppose that you're trying to find money for your company. Well, you can find money by trying to do partnerships and maybe you talk to three or four companies. You can find money by talking to angels and maybe you want to talk to three or four angels. Uh, you might find money from VCs. You might find money from grants. And let's suppose that you pick the top three or four or five do you think that might work and you now have independent individuals within your group task at trying to find and help get closed on money from someplace. 
chances are maybe one of them is going to come through. <laughs> Whereas if you're only going out and looking for an angel or you're only going out and looking for a business deal, you know, it might take longer or you might not get it. So looking at alternate ways to get to the end goal can be extremely important to achieving the goal and increase your chances of success. Well, you know, I, I know that works in hockey because <laughs> that's a very big uh, metric called shots on goal. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember uh, working on a, a, a project team and then we, we had learned that the company had opened up another team in parallel to us that was working on the same goal. Well, you, know, you know, all of us were pissed, but you know, when you step back and look at the big picture, they were trying to increase, the company was trying to increase odds of it succeeding. They wanted it to work. They didn't care whether you did it or the other guys did it. They needed it done. <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. exactly. somebody else. So you're in competition. And, and, and there's, a, there's an unsavory sort of a feeling with being in competition with your coworkers, okay? Yeah. That's not bad. It's you know, and in fact, it you know, if the competition may have been important for the company because if they got the job done, they needed done. They didn't care whether you did it or the other guys did. They just needed it. Well, it was it went back to that fear again. You, yeah, yeah, you mentioned earlier, you know, because like we we knew we were in competition with other people, and if we didn't succeed, possibly we would lose our jobs. Well, even people making decisions have that as an issue. I like my dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. I like it. It's, it's, it works so, great on the video. So, uh, even even people in big companies uh, refuse to make uh, decisions because uh, they're concerned that by making a decision, their boss might fire them, or the boss might not want to make the decision. So they keep passing it up the line. And so that inability to have someone make a decision for fear of losing their job is part of what big companies struggle with. The last thing you need is to have a small company that's a startup struggle with that kind of stuff. Yeah. People need to feel that they are uh, empowered. They need to feel they're an important part. If you run uh, projects in parallel with two different people uh, running the same project, they should understand that your goal is to get there. It may be some point where they've each made certain headway, and by getting them together, they can make they can do it. It's important to reach the end goal more than it is to have people be worried about all the rest of the crap that gets there. Because you're so small and you got such limited resources, you can't afford to not make your your end goals. Yeah, no, and 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 your last point on, on one of the the six was success is up to you, right? Yeah. Now you know when I I grew up in a in a household, my my dad was a merchant, and uh, you know, and, and you know, if you read my blog, you'll see that I talked about immigrants in in my most recent uh, blog and startup, and I talk about uh, successes of of individuals, and there's a particular article. A topic in this most recent article that I wrote that we didn't, you may or may not have read it yet, but it was about uh, 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 an individual. I was just out in your neck of the woods, uh, probably, uh, it was down in like, it, it, just down below the airport area down in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I had met a 69 year old uh, gentleman who appeared to be a lifetime entrepreneur. <laughs> Um, and he, as, he, as we're talking to him about doing some work with a, one of the client companies that I deal with, he's highlighting, he came here, his, his dad was a farmer. He came here to this country on a one-way ticket. He didn't have enough money to get back. He knew he had to succeed. He ended up managing to go through college, get a PhD. Um, again, he didn't have any money. He had to figure out how to do all of this. He ended up getting a job in a Fortune 500 company. He got laid off. Decided, okay, I can make I can make my own products. So he actually created a company making a product. Within about three or four years, the company got bought. Wow! With he started another company. He's gone through five exits, all in the eight-figure range. Oh my and god! The guy is 69 years old, works at his own laboratory at the bench, runs the company. Uh, one of my friends, I didn't know my friend knew him out there, uh, I was talking to him, and says, this guy okay? He says, I invested in two of his deals, I made ten times my money in two years at one of them. Wow. I'm sitting there saying, okay, now, I don't know about you, but I love entrepreneurship, I love hearing success stories, it is really up to the individual to decide whether they want to succeed or they want to fail. My parents always told me when I was growing up, you know, you can do it if you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a fact. 
If you give up, it's not going to happen. If you keep searching and find ways to do it, you can make it happen. And that's the, the philosophy that I tend to try and tell people. No, it's, it's great. I mean, I've been able to sit down with Taffy multiple times, not only online here, but in person. I was, I was fortunate to do it in person. And, you know, I gained a lot of insights from him about just lessons in life and trying. <laughs> and that trying part is that success he's talking about. So I, I really appreciate it. Hey, you know, you always have some good stories. So speaking of stories, you know, do you have any stories about failure you could share with oh, the yeah. audience here? You can't be in this business and not have had uh, those also rants. <laughs> so, so I specialized for about 14 years in doing turnarounds. And one of the companies I took over, uh, you know, we had uh, we had finally gotten it to the point where we had several major catastrophes that occurred. Uh, I, we had to get rid of the founding scientists and give them their technology and tell them to go play elsewhere. Of course, they own 51% of the company. That was rather intriguing. Uh, we ended up. Uh, having a $16 million financing with final deal documents when two days before the annual shareholder meeting to get the final approvals to be able to close on the deal, they called and said, we're not going to give you the money. I already got the meeting set up. I had to walk in a room of 60 people and explain to them that we have signed deal documents. Yes, it is. And answering all these questions, saying, yes, the deal is, 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 is inked, it's done, they signed it, they agreed to do it, uh, we have contracts. Uh, but they're not going to do it. <laughs> now, and then postpone the meeting to a date uncertain. That was a particularly difficult day. Um, the, we ultimately threatened to syndicate a lawsuit. Uh, we managed to close on $9 million within a couple of months. Uh, that was a rather interesting set of, of things. We then went on to um, try to acquire a product that was out in California. So we, we put that deal together. One of the dumbest things I ever did was let one of my board members get involved in negotiations. <laughs> this guy, I had a plain vanilla deal, me and my CFO, and we went out and met with these people. It was a plain vanilla deal. It was either do this deal, plain vanilla, or not. He put in all this other crap. We inherited creditors. We inherited the, It just turned out to be a fiasco. Every time we raised money, we had to pay people off. We couldn't explain the deal to anybody. It was just nasty. Uh, it was something that I now know that before I ever let a board member do a stupid deal like that again, I'd walk out of the company. I just would. <laughs> but uh, so ultimately, the deal led to us eventually selling off the company in pieces rather than having a successful company because we bought a product and we had ways to expand it. But every time we got money, it was going out the door to pay off the creditors and stuff, and we had to let it go. So, so sometimes. Things happen. It can be within your control. I could have walked, or I could have said, "No, we're not doing that." I didn't. Um, you know, it was fear of, "Okay, I got a board member saying we got to do this, and the board wants to do this, so I'm going along with it." I could have just walked, but I should have, but I didn't. Uh, it it could have been, you know, that uh, uh, that when they wanted to decide to sell off the company in pieces, I could have said, "No, uh, we're going to continue. We've got six million dollars, eight million dollars lined up, but we're shy of the ten. But I think we can manage to get there. We're not closing it down." When you, when you sometimes are afraid to stand up for what you know is the right way to go, you can end up in bad territory and have the company. So we sold it off. We didn't make nearly what we should have made on that, on that business. I consider that uh, personally a failure, uh, even though, uh, you know, it was a, but, but it was bad. Uh, it, was, uh, it was one of those things that if I had it to do over again, I can promise you it would have been done differently. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, those things happen. Uh, have I had major catastrophes? All of them, the companies I dealt with had major catastrophes. They were all turnarounds. Um, you know, I had some really weird stories I would tell you over beer sometime. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, you definitely. I'll take you up on that next time you're here in San Francisco. We won't do breakfast, but do a, a either a dinner or something else, man. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I, I think you know you you touched on that with that story. You touched on all the kind of the six points. Uh, you kind of learn from it because you could actually tell us stories how you could probably do it better. Um, you survived, obviously. Uh, you, you didn't, you're still, still here talking to me about it. Well, I mean, I, just to give you an example, I'm in the process of trying to do a spin-out company out of a large institution. And it's an, it's an IT company for healthcare. And I put together, I put together the structure for this thing. So, so I'm talking to the other side because I'm trying to protect both the, the institution and the other side, which is a company. 
And so they had gotten a call from the institutional attorneys, which have never done these kind of deals before, wanting to know why this thing, why they're pay, getting, he's getting paid royalties and other other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, the institution is getting royalties. He's getting he's getting royalties. I said, look, it's up to you whether you decide to do this. I designed the structure such that. If anybody acquired enough and asked you to step aside as the chief executive officer, your company and this other institution are properly protected. That's because I've been through the process of either having to put the screws to people or being screwed. <laughs> and I said, yes, you are paying yourself if the company never gets bought, but your goal is to sell the company. <laughs> and you may not have an option if enough investors come in and take over. So it is designed to protect both parties because there's a license agreement with both of them. Now you can decide not to go and force that to take place, or you can decide, you know, but, but it's up to you how you do it. Right, right. So, yeah. so by failures in the past, by things that have occurred in the past, I'm able to talk to some of the people that I interact with and give them ideas about how they might be harmed in the future and try to put protections in place to take care of them. Right, right. Well, that that's a great segment on failure. I, I think, uh, like I said, in light of the FailCon um, uh, uh, conference that came up this month. Uh, I think that was a great closer to it. Um, so let's close off the interview. And again, thanks, Taffy. Uh, I, I always grateful and appreciative of your time. So how can listeners get a hold of you uh, and uh, get a hold of Colonial? It certainly PC? would have been easier had I been able to figure out this Google Hangout toolbox thing because my logo doesn't show up in the bottom. <laughs> we'll but, figure out that in November as uh, insights. Uh, Colonial but, uh, TDC, C O L O N I A L. TDC.com would be the website uh, for Colonial. And you'll find the drop down menus for the blog, the examiner, and my photography there. Uh, it just makes it simple. So if you go great, to the great upper, photography, uh, it's all there. That's great. No, I appreciate that. And, and, and by the way, I didn't even, I think I may have sent you or shown you pictures of my daughter's blog on fashion. I've gotten into a little bit of fashion photography as well. Oh, well. Well, um, I you this, right? I, no. After after the broadcast, I want to see these things. So anyway. I'll send it to you. You can start. Well, you, you can go see it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, right. So anyway, that was Taffy Williams of Colonial TDC. As he, as you mentioned, you catch him on the small business section of examiner.com uh, through the Charlotte Small Business Examiner, where he writes a lot about articles about entrepreneurship and of course his blog, startup blog. Um, so thanks for joining us, everyone. This is Greg Warrior, a.k.a. Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nurse Hawker Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful out there. Thanks, Taffy. See you hey, later. Hey, bye. Right.